Right then, so this is my 16 step sequencer in pure data. I'm going to play it to you first before explaining. So first off I'll explain that the lower left cold inlet sends, the upper left cold inlet receives, and the upper right hot inlet um, stores, presumably a number. So it starts with a toggle box uh, or bang, so this sends the bang. Um, it all starts here. So once the bang is sent it goes through to the metro, uh, the metronome. That's storing 300, which represent, represents 300 milliseconds. I have a load bang here, set to 300. So upon loading the patch, 300 milliseconds is already stored. And this can be changed. So I can change this to 100. And every 100 milliseconds, the bang will get sent. Or sent through. So, uh, yeah, you can see that. Right, so once uh, the bang has gone through to the metro and it knows that it's uh, well, it's now going through every 100 milliseconds, that gets sent through to the float, uh, which is sometimes abbreviated as F. Uh, this stands for floating point number. Uh, my float is uh, storing a plus one, so it adds one value, it adds another value on uh, to the previous value every time it goes through. So as you can see, in this number box, it's going up by one every time. Uh, this, this float is then connected to a modulo, uh, which is wrapping the numbers in uh, 16. So you can see in the number box below that every time it gets up to 16, it repeats back to zero, and this is where the 16 step sequence to, starts to starts to develop, starts to actually look like a sequence. Below this num number box, uh, I'll have a graphical interface which uh, basically represents where the step is at. You can actually see uh, where, where the black, where the box is highlighted black is where the step is at. Uh, underneath this uh, graphical interface I have a select object box which goes from 0 to 15, which is 16 values. Uh, each time the bang lands on the, on the box, or each time the bang lands on uh, the select 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, each time it lands on that in sequence, it gets sent to the float, which is storing a number, which is storing uh, the, the number. The number represents the pitch uh, or the frequency, uh, although it's actually the MIDI note. So, for example, the MIDI note of this uh, float is set to 73, MIDI note 73, uh, but that's because I've got load bangs all the way across the bottom here which have numbers, um, MIDI note numbers, uh, that I've chosen. That means that when you load the patch up, the, the numbers will uh, automatically send to these floats. These floats are then connected to uh, vertical sliders, and you can see that the black lines are representing where about on the slider the, the pitch is. Uh, low pitch at the bottom, high pitch at the top. I've set them all around kind of mid-range, upper mid-range maybe. Um, so, this is float number 0, 1, 2, 3, so 0, 1, 2, 3, um, and each of these floats is connected to a number box here, so whilst the um, patch is playing you can actually see the numbers changing here, these are all of the uh, MIDI, this is all the MIDI data you can see. Uh, this object box here is a MIDI to frequency which all the floats are connected to. So the float uh, of the number uh, is connected to MIDI frequency and that basically converts the MIDI note into uh, a frequency, into a into a frequency that can then go into a synth synthesizer, which is this part. I'll just stop that. So the MIDI frequency is connected to a phaser. The phaser is a um, sawtooth oscillator uh, and that is connected to a uh, a filter here, 
It's left at 220 hertz, but that's um, not relevant because they're not playing at 220 hertz because I've set all my own pitches. Uh, the minute frequency is also connected to a multiplier. I've multiplied it by 1.5, which basically um, means an octave and a half above that of the phaser. Uh, a sawtooth oscillator is, tends to be quite harsh sounding uh, oscillator, so the uh, octave and a half above that basically just helps to soften out the uh, oscillator. Um, that's the thing going into the um, filter. It's actually a low-pass filter. Um, it, it stops the, the, the low rumbles, if you like, from getting through, which can sometimes sound quite messy and, well, in some circumstances can actually break your speakers. Uh, this then goes through to the DAT, uh, which stands for Digital to Analog Converter. And that's what's allowing us to actually hear the sound. It's changing the digital information, or the patch, into um, analog energy or analog audio so we can actually hear what's going on um, and this is like this is all binary code so it's all ones and zeros or zeros and ones uh, a one is an open gate it's a sound that's being made a zero is a closed gate it means it's not making a sound it means when when it's the one it's actually playing the sound when it's a zero it's making the transaction from one step to the next and then it plays the next step the next sound so, um, that is pretty much my 16 step sequencer explained. And I'm just going to credit my uh, module lecturer because the patch originally started off as an 8 step sequencer, which I took from uh, a lecture um, that we all did together as a class. And I'm also going to credit uh, the Floss Manual, which is a, um, uh, an internet uh, source. Um, Basically, uh, building a 16-step sequence, as you can see here, this is what I use to help me uh, in discovering how to build a 16-step uh, sequencer.